Hello everyone, welcome back to part 5 of my perfume collection series. Today I will be sharing with you my classics, my vintages, and my stronger floral fragrances. So I will be starting with this area. This is a 15 milliliter of Calvin Klein's Obsession. This is the For Her version. And I'm not really sure if this is the original formulation or a newer formulation. I was inspired to buy this fragrance when I watched Kayleen Loves Perfumes videos. And I remember my mom owning a bottle of this one. So I decided to buy a small 15 ml. I really wanted to get a bigger bottle of this, but I guess this one will just suffice because I don't really use this a lot personally. This one mainly for nostalgic purposes, as with most of these fragrances in this collection. So here I have Insolence by Guerlain. It was fairly hyped in YouTube early 2020, and a lot of people describe this one as candied violets kind of fragrance, which I can't really relate to because I haven't tried any Parma violets candy. This fragrance is very special to me because, I don't know, it just brings me back to the past when I was a little girl. I know my mom did not own this one or any of my aunts, but it just smells very, very familiar. I guess it's just the use of violets and iris and florals which were very common during the early 90s and here at the back i just did a separate review of this this is lt pivers heliotrope blanc i bought this for my halloween series this one together with two others are still commonly used right now in folk magic since we are talking about this house i might as well talk about all the other fragrances that i bought together with heliotrope blanc so these are my trio from LT Piver. Here, this one is Rev Dior. This is the stronger out of the three. This one has incense and a lot of spicy florals. So this is the more challenging one compared to the other two. Pea is a spicy, aromatic floral. Trope Blanc, on the other hand, is a friendlier kind of fragrance because it's more relatable. This one has heliotrope, it has almond and vanilla, so it's friendlier in that sense. While these two, you have to love your vintage fragrances. This is a very spicy and almost herbal floral, while Rev Dior is incense metallic, and that very strong floral as well. And here in front is 1000 by Jean Pateau. Um, my mom didn't use this fragrance or like, I'm not familiar with this house. I just bought it because it was on clearance. And I knew that this one would belong to that 90s strong floral category. I bought, this was a tester bottle, but the company was kind enough to give me a cap together with a bottle. I bought this one on clearance together with Bulgari's um, Tuberous Mystique. I bought them at a very, very affordable price. This fragrance was actually released, I think, early 2000, if I'm not mistaken. So this isn't really a 90s fragrance, but it gives you that whole 90s vibe scent-wise. So this one has tons of florals. This has rose as one of them, carnation, I think, bergamot, and a lot of other notes as well. You really want to get Sublime, Joy, Sublime Forever. So there are 30 mils available here locally. But with this collection, I just buy them for myself. These these aren't really fragrances that I wear on the daily or fragrances that I wear personally. I just love to keep them because it's like my special collection within my collection. So here at the back is another fragrance that wasn't released during the 90s but it gives me the whole 90s vibe. This is the discontinued Elisab Essence line. I have number 9 tuberose. This one isn't really super vintage in terms of scent this one has cinnamon it has i think some citrus but the main floral is of course tuberose i originally wanted to get the rose one the rose version and they also have i think amber and they have oud neroli i think and vetiver but this is super hard to find i know joss jane or joss fragrance mixology has a lot from this um, fragrance line and I think you can find them more at fragrancebuy.ca, but they don't ship here to Iceland. And Fragrance X, they don't have fragrances from this line. So this is my only Elisa from the Essence line. This is Tuberose. The Tuberose is like green here. It's not super heady. 
This one is actually a very elegant and classy scent, but I put this one here because it's discontinued and the scent profile actually really reminds me of those mature florals. So here is a, I think I believe this is an early 2000 fragrance. This is Mambo by Liz Claiborne, Mambo for her. And I bought this because I saw this in one of Kay Loves Perfumes um, videos. And this one has notes like mango, it also has ginger, ylang ylang, and hibiscus. So I was really drawn to the notes because they remind me of home, hibiscus flowers and all of that. So that's why I decided to buy this. And I have been wearing this one a lot when I first got it. There's a good dent in there and it's easy to find. So I'm not really scared of emptying that bottle, but I just wanted to savor this one together with the other um, fragrances in this collection. So this one, Cabochard by Grasse Parfums. Um, there is an older bottle, I think, that looks like um, the older Chanel bottles, um, rectangular, with the black cap. This one was released, I think, 2019, re-released. I'm not really so sure, but this is the EDP version, Eau de Parfum. Yes, there's an Eau de Toilette, and there's also a Cherie Flanker, which I really, really want to get. This one is a very strong, but also bright and crisp aldehyde fragrance. This has a lot of florals, usually florals like rose and white florals. And I noticed that also in this collection or fragrances that belong to the stronger floral category, they always have florals like geranium and all of that. So spicy florals as well. And here in front is one of my first blind buys as well. One of my first YouTube made me buy it. This is Casimir's Chopard, and I have a separate video talking about this fragrance. I really, really like this. Actually, a friendlier, like early 90s fragrance because it is not super strong. It is not like obsession. But this one does have that almost classy kind of um, mature accord to it. I, I hope I'm not offending anyone by saying mature, but this one is a sweet fragrance beautiful it has a lot of notes like it has coconut peach apricot tons of vanilla such a beautiful fragrance still very very happy that i have this in my collection taboo by dana cologne this i bought together with obsession also because of k loves perfumes and she was the only one i think that i watched or i saw talking about this fragrance and now i know that Ige or idioma lewis loves this one as well so i'm gonna link her channel down below my, my son describes this one as a very cinnamony kind of fragrance just like obsession so we actually have a video my son and i it was my first year anniversary on youtube and we talked about my timeless classic fragrances all these fragrances here and he described both of these fragrances as very cinnamony one is that spicy balsamic almost balmy kind of fragrance so this is taboo and here at the back i have Rochas tocad this is a floral vanilla fragrance I bought this after seeing this in one of gb fragrances videos giselle the bottle is really quirky, but I really like it. But the scent isn't really a very like vintage kind of scent, even though this one was released, I think, late 90s, early 2000s. This is just that floral, powdery vanilla. It's a very simple scent, but it's also classy and elegant. It's like that chic, smart, casual kind of scent. Basically, all of these are just those, what we call them, oriental florals, spicy florals. So these are those kind of fragrances. So here at the back, this huge one right here, I bought because of Veronica Sess. There is also a flanker of this one that comes in a red bottle. Another one that I really want to get together with the Cherie flanker of Cabochard. This one is from the house of Aubusson and this is Deserade. So I have a separate review video. I think I'm going to make another video talking about my classic or vintage fragrances because I talked about this fragrance during my Halloween series. So it's not really the most flattering kind of review. But this one is a beautiful fragrance. It is a very powdery floral. It has a lot of fruity notes which bloom during the dry down of the scent. So when this one is fully dried down, it's not as powdery and it becomes fruity, sweet, floral. So 
bottle is weird, just like Tokad, but I think this one takes that trophy of being the weirdest bottle that I own. Desserade by the House of Obusan. And here is a special, special bottle. I have been wanting to get this. I don't know why. This is Bluegrass by Elizabeth Arden, and this was a gift from Claire Smith. So super thankful to have this in my collection. I really wanted to haul this before, but it wasn't available. I was super bummed and she remembered that video and she gifted me this bottle. So this will forever be in my collection. This is that powdery. I think this one has notes like violets and a ton of, I think this one has aldehydes as well, but it has purple florals. But when it comes to the scent profile, this isn't really as strong and as spicy compared to most fragrances that I have. This is more on the powdery softer the softness side. of this fragrance reminds me of fragrances like this one this one is from the house of casherelle and this is eden this was released in during the mid 90s i think and this i was super shocked with this fragrance i thought this one would be a very strong green floral like strong i would imagine like maybe strong on the marigold saffron and rose and all of that but this is a very smooth fragrance, very friendly, but this one is super strong. I sprayed this on a strip of paper during my night shift and it filled up the entire office. So <laughs> it was super wrong in doing that. I couldn't open the windows because there was a snowstorm. But anyway, this is super long lasting. It's wide projecting, but the fragrance just reminds me of the mid century kind of fashion and lifestyle even though this was released in the 90s i'm going to bring decants of these fragrances and ask my mom if she tried them before so hopefully we can go for a vacation back home in the philippines this july and i am going to bring decants of these fragrances and ask for my mom's reaction if she is familiar with these so here you guys you can see my shalimar I have told you guys before in my other videos that I have a thing for Shalimar. I don't know why. I just want to buy or add more Shalimar fragrances in my collection. This was the second one that I bought, Shalimar Souffle de Lumiere. This is a partial bottle. And the first one that I bought was the EDT. This is the EDT, I think. Eau de Toilette, yes. And I was planning on buying the Souffle Flanker, Souffle de Parfum. But I don't know why, I, I just put it off for a while because I needed to declutter. So these are my only two Shalimars for now. I really want to get the newer release. I think it's the vanilla something. I'm going to write it on screen. And I also want to get the Eau de Cologne that comes in the classic bottle. And the last one I want to get is the EDP, the original. So these are my two Shalimar fragrances for now. And here you can see, I bought this one together with Eden. This one is Lulu. I was also shocked by this fragrance because based on the reviews that I read and I've seen, I really expected this one to be a very, very strong floral, but it's not. Smelling this from the nozzle, though, can be traumatizing, but the scent itself is very soft and powdery, almost like similar to the softness in Eden and also in Bluegrass. But this one is more of a strong white and purple floral. Here at the back, I've already shown you guys. This is the Pompeia. And here I have Kenzo Jungle Elephant. And I know you guys are wondering why I put this together with this collection. This one was actually released in the 90s. So when you think of it, this is already a vintage. And scent profile-wise, this is also something that I honestly don't wear every day. This is a special occasion kind of fragrance where I need to be in a certain kind of mood to wear this fragrance. I have a separate review talking about this. This is, I think, the spiciest fragrance that I have when it comes to spices like ginger and cardamom and all of that. I don't have anything like this fragrance. And that is also the reason why this collection is special because I don't have anything like these fragrances in my current perfume collection so this is kenzo jungle lelephant i have a huge hundred mil so when i saw this in one of our discounter websites and even though it was a huge hundred mil i decided to get it because i knew it would be out of stock right away and it was so here at the back is aramis perfume calligraphy saffron so this is a very warm spicy floral that's balsamic and herbal it has notes like of course saffron it has rose but it also has marigold and a lot of other florals this is very green i actually wanted to get the rose one and i can never find the rose version 
So it was available on our website, but you know, it was out of stock and it was never back in stock. So I only have this one. I'm on the wait list for the rose version of this one for, on Fragrance X, but I've been on the wait list since late 2020, early 2021. So I can never find this one. Where I can find the rose version of this one, let me know. And I think we tackled every single one in this collection. I talked about this rod. Yeah, I think we are done with this portion right here. So these are my classics, my vintages, my very special fragrances. I don't wear these fragrances a lot. I wear them during special occasions or when I do, I wear them for myself. I just spray my hands with them and enjoy these fragrances. So I will never declutter any bottle from this um, bunch. So that is it for today's video, you guys. Thank you for sharing a big chunk of your day watching episode 5 of my perfume collection series. This is the last installment of my full bottle collection. The last episode, part 6, will be all about my travel size fragrances.